这个话题，我们还可以。Now, just before we go on to our Q and A, I should say that we have only five of the seven candidates in Newtown tonight. Uh, we were unable to make any contact with Dale Dinham from No Land Tax. We did make contact with Rachel Wellgall from the Liberal Party. Uh, she was uh, she and her campaign informed us that they wanted to come on tonight, but they were directed by the head office of the Liberal Party that they were not permitted to come. They also said that they were happy with us relaying that information to the audience. <laughs> so we move on now to our question and answer section of the night. Uh, to try to make this a little bit more orderly, if those of you who would like to ask questions, if you could come down and just line up on the, uh, the left hand side here of the hall, to my, just to my right. Uh, if anybody has um, mobility difficulties, um, and he's unable to stand for a prolonged period of time. If you want to just raise your hand and I'll come and I'll uh, bring the microphone over to you. But uh, if you'd like to come along and just line up, if you'd like to ask any questions of the candidates. Uh, my question is a transport question, uh, specifically to Jenny, uh, I'd like Penny's and anybody else's response. Um, I see on your policy that you want to get rid of Tristan Smith Airport, and you're also opposed to Badgerys Creek. Uh, when do you intend to phase out Kingsford Smith Airport, and why have you come out, and why are you against Badgerys Creek and phasing out Kingsford Smith Airport? So when and why? Thanks very much for the question. I think if all of us would agree that if we were starting to plan Sydney from scratch again today, that we wouldn't necessarily decide to put Kingsford Smith Airport where it sits now. It sits inside the Sydney Airport Air Basin, which adds to air pollution. There is a huge problem with the issue of aircraft noise. And the reality is that what we need to see is actually using our inner city spaces for what we desperately need to see, which is more affordable housing, more open space and green space. Sydney's Kingsford Smith Airport is where it is. The Greens' policy is to have a long-term vision and plan. We don't shy away from having long-term visions and plans, but eventually Sydney's Kingsford Smith Airport should be moved out of the inner city. But that said, that could only happen if we built world-class high-speed rail. As someone that used to work in Hong Kong, it's one of the cities that once moved their airport out of the city, put in effective, amazing, world-class public transport, and that city functions and thrives and is able to go. So it is green policy that we need to have that vision for the long term, but that said, we're not afraid to have a vision that might sound a little bit like it can get a crazy headline, but the reality is that's what we need to see if we're going to talk about big picture vision for what we want for the future of the state. Now, we, um, we do have a, we try to get to a minute, and that was fine, Jane. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Sydney should have a no airport policy, which is essentially what the Greens are proposing. We need to build, we need to build Badgerys Creek. We need to build Badgerys Creek for two reasons. We need to build Badgerys Creek for Sydney because it is a transformative project that will bring jobs to Western Sydney, that will allow connections um, through public transport, that will actually allow people who live in the greater west of our city to live closer to where they work and to, and to really transform our city. Badgerys Creek is not just about airport policy, it's actually about transforming our city. The second part of it is it's completely unrealistic to suggest that we could shut down KSA and move an airport somewhere else. We've spent 20 years getting to Badgerys Creek. The idea that we would, we would shut down Kingsford with airport is unrealistic. If we don't get serious about serious serious about Badgerys Creek, though, our local area is going to hit it hard as the Liberals try to reduce the curfew and put more flights per hour. We have to get serious about Badgerys 
and we also have to make sure that KSA does not continue to have more and more pressure on it, which allows more and more impact in our local area. Uh, one of my mentors, Paul Green, has a phrase, you want to do the right things, the right way, in the right order. Now, I um, think it would be great to have high speed rail and use that as a way to get to the airport. Uh, but the right order, in my mind, is let's get the high speed rail. And I know that there's local councils in the Badger's Creek area that want the stub line out from Glenfield to link up to somewhere in East America. So let's, let's get the high speed rail, let's get the heavy rail service that the local council and local residents want out there, and then when that's on the ground, then relocation of airports is great. Um, so I do things in that order. I focus on getting the suburban rail to South West Sydney and the high speed rail, which in my understanding is only realistic if you get <coughs> Federal government money coming in, uh, and if those things are locked in, then let's move the airport, or at least we'll get it. Did any of the other candidates wish to speak to that topic? Okay, we'll move on to our next question. Um, and perhaps if we can just, um, with all the questions, just say your first name and where you're from. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Wendy, I've been a resident of uh, Newtown since 1986. Um, Penny, I've got a question for you about the West Connects, and I'd also like um, comments on the West Connects from the other speakers. Um, earlier in the week at another forum, you said that you were committed to transparency of the West Connects. You are, in fact, and have been for several years, the Chairman Minister for Transport, and in that capacity, I'm sure you work very carefully with the ex Minister for Roads, Michael Daly, and the current Shadow Minister, Michael Daly. Uh, it was no surprise when you came out with the announcement later that you supported the West Connects, the M4 into the CBD and the M5 duplicated across to um, Port Botany because that has always been your policy on and off, as you know, over the last 10 years. Uh, several years ago, when the Green Lee Rhiannon asked for Labor to table their route for the M4 extension into the CBD, Labor refused. However, at the time data said that it will cost $135 million for acquisitions for the M4 extension alone, that is a cut from the $10 million to build it. At the time, it was cancelled because of community opposition. So what I want to ask you is, what is your current knowledge and understanding of what, what route Labor will take for the M4 East through the inner west into uh, the CBD? What, what is your current understanding of what route is proposed for the M4 extension through to the CBD? Luke Follier said it won't come up in Haddonfield or Ashfield, so can you tell us where it will come up? And if you won't tell us, how do, how do you expect us to believe that you, will, that you are transparent? Thanks, Wendy. Um, I appreciate you've asked the question for the second time this week. Um, our position is very clear in relation to this. Um, Labor will build the M5 extension and it will go to Port Botany, and we've said that we will refer to infrastructure New South Wales, which we are changing completely in terms of the way that it operates to be an independent operation, where, where we would bring from Homebush Bay Drive um, the M4 East extension into the city. I'm not going to, and I'm not able to tell you exactly where the entries and entrance for that will be. What I am able to tell you is that Labor's committed to publishing the business case and to publishing the cost benefit analysis of that, and for also doing the community consultation before um, we would proceed with that. That is, um, that is the response, it's the same response that I gave you the other day, and it's not going to change because that's the way that we're going to do it. We understand that it is wrong to suggest that Labor supports West Connects. Labor is not going to build the St. Peter's Interchange. We are not going to do the M4 to M5 type of connection. We're going to ensure that like one square centimetre of Petersham Park or Sydney Park or Peel Street is destroyed by this. Um, at this election, the difference about what happens particularly in Newtown and particularly in relation to West Connects is very stark between Labor and Liberal. Um, my answer remains the same. It's the same as it was yesterday. We will publish all of it. It will be transparent and it will be open. 
And we're not shy away from saying that we will build some roads. So could I ask for a response then from the What we might do, Wendy, is if you'd like to ask follow-up questions, if you would like to join the back of the line, we'll just have we'll have all of the candidates answer first. Oh sorry, that's all I asked. That's fine. Well yes, oh sorry, Mr. Perry. Yes, it's right. Thank you. Um, the Australian Cyclist Party is just outraged to see this uh, proposal on, on the table at the moment. It's just absolutely wrong-headed for us to be talking about spending uh, $500 million uh, a metre, I believe, for, um, for road developments that will be, uh, well, uh, as far as the City Council reports that have just come out, uh, they won't even be properly utilised. They, uh, they won't be financially viable. Uh, it's just wrong-headed. Uh, okay, we have to get freight out of Port Botany, but there are railway systems that can be used to do that. So uh, we will uh, have to work with the government that's selected, but uh, certainly our pressure will be to, um, to just change the priorities completely when it comes to motorway development. Thank you. Thanks very much. I think it's pretty clear that what we're getting from both Liberal and Labor around WestConnex is pretty slippery. And so I want to be really upfront and say that the Greens oppose WestConnex. We oppose stage one, stage two, stage three, and any version or combination of WestConnex. We should not be spending billions of dollars on a dirty tollway. We should be spending it on world-class public transport. $4.5 billion is the amount of public money that would be slated to be put into WestConnex project that wouldn't require the part that would sell off the poles and wires to fund the project. $4.5 billion, based on the Greens Transport Plan, would deliver the inner city regional Sydney cycle network that has long overdue. It would make all of our train stations accessible so that elderly people, people with cramps, children, shopping, mobility issues wouldn't have to struggle up and down the train station stairs. It would also deliver light rail on Parramatta Road. Those are just some of the things that 4.5 billion could buy, and instead we have bipartisan support for billions of dollars into dirty tollways.
Bill and I've lived in the area since 1989. Um, one of the issues that is of concern to me is another privatisation issue, but one which doesn't seem to get the publicity that other things do, and that's the sell-off of a government service called the Home Care Service of New South Wales. It delivers home support services to around 50,000 residents in this state, frail age, young people with disabilities, and the state government is effectively saying they wish to play no role in the delivery of services for some of its most vulnerable citizens. Um, so I'd like to know where people stand on this, and I'm also particularly interested in what Penny has to say, because I understand when Labor was last in government, they were planning to do this too. Thanks for the question. Um, there's a wholesale, there's a whole, there's a wholesale competitive tendering and outsourcing of public services happening under this government. We know that there's been thousands of public service jobs that have been lost, and we know that there are. We've already seen what happened in relation to um, homelessness services. We know that we're slated for a whole lot of others to uh, be privatised. I, say, I, just, I can't give you the answer of what Labor was planning to do in the last, under the last government. I just simply don't know, but I'll be very happy to confirm that. If you, if you say that, I'm prepared to believe you about that. Um, Labor is completely concerned about all of the things that are being slated for outsourcing. Within the NDIS rollout, New South Wales has gone further than anyone else in terms of saying there's no role for the public sector or public provision of services, and we don't support that. Um, in relation to the home care service, that is also our position. We'll go on the table. Um, well, one of the problems we've had is that evidence hasn't been taken into account in, um, in a lot of policies in the area we're most concerned with. And when we look at other areas, we, we also think that the evidence would have to be looked at. I'd be most surprised if the evidence was that home care services would be best done by private enterprise. Oh, it's possible. I haven't actually looked at that evidence, but I'd be very surprised. We need to look at the evidence, and uh, but my, my view at the moment would be that it is a classic example of the responsibility of government. Government should provide those services. Thanks so much for the question. I think that this is one of those questions where having a Liberal candidate absent is really important to acknowledge because what we have seen in the move forward through a privatisation agenda of not just our public assets, so the threatening of the sell-off of the Australian Technology Park site and public infrastructure, but actually the outsourcing and sell-off of care in our community. And that's something that is appalling and disgusting and goes completely against the Greens principles and support for public investment in public health care and public services and public infrastructure. But as we've also heard, Labor in opposition and Labor in government are often different things. And before we had the Mike Baird on steroids version of privatisation, we were seeing a Labor Party and a Labor government that were actually moving towards various types of privatisations and sell-offs and underfunding of our public assets and services. I would say the Greens being there in Parliament is the best way to hold Labor to account on their promises in the future. Uh, I'm not sure if the NDIS comes to your question. But it's sort of a similar issue. Okay. 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 There's some relationships, but it's got nothing yeah. to do with the cell phone. Uh, so, one thing that we're very strong in CDP is caring for the vulnerable. Now, NDIS is great in that the government's acknowledging let's put more resources into this. Uh, I suppose I just want to have everyone keep a close eye with the NDIS that if somebody's deemed to need a certain level of care, that if their condition generally deteriorates to the point where they need extra resources, extra man hours, that those actual resources can be delivered to that individual. Uh, and I think the other thing is, if contracts are given, uh, I think that we need to ensure that the contracts are of a long enough duration 
that these private providers had to spend all their time, you know, settling into a contract and then figuring out how to hand over their patients. So they're going to be contracts that extend them long to give stability of care. Next question. My name is Colin. Uh, my house in St Peggers is one of those being affected, being resumed by Western mm -hmm. Ends. Uh, I'm also going for a bit of a repeat question because I asked one on the previous forum and Penny didn't answer it, but that was because the chair actually ruled it as a, what was it, a statement or whatever. Um, the road reservation in, on Edgeway Road was lifted by the previous Labor government. The boundary between the electorate at Marrickville Lynn and Heffron is the railway line. They did not lift the reservation on the other side of the railway line. In other words, St Peter's Campbell Road, Campbell Street. I would ask my class Penny why that reservation was not lifted by the previous Labor government. To me it sounds very politically opportunist. And also, I would like to ask her if with their plan for West Connects, if it can be called a plan, uh, will they lift the reservation on St Peter's? Um, Colin, good to have your question again. As you know from um, the road reservation on Edgeway Road, there's a really big community campaign that comes to the local member who worked really hard with people to have that road reservation removed. I'm not able to tell you why it didn't go any further, um, but I do think that it was obvious particularly why... I do think it's curious why it did, because it's clear to me that Campbell Street is not... Um, shouldn't have the road reservation on it. Having said that, though, Labor's position in relation to the land acquisitions is very clear. If we're elected in March, we're going to stop the land acquisitions. Can you let me finish, please? Um, I'm very happy to do this. This is the second time you've asked me that question. Um, Labor is going to stop the land acquisition because we don't believe they should be proceeding, because we don't think that the St. Peter's Interchange will work, nor will it be a good policy, nor will it be good for this local community, and nor will it deal with the real problem, which is about getting the freight to and from our port. Um, I can't give you a commitment around what we would do with the road reservation, but if we stop the land acquisition, it would be obvious that we should start looking at the road reservation, and I'd be very happy to do that, although it's actually in the state set of Pepperon, but I'm happy to, to look at it. <clears throat> uh, no, did you want to speak or not? No, I think I've made my point clear. Jenny, did you want to speak? I was just going to say that I think that that is an example of the difference between what we see from the way that both Labor and Liberal campaign in elections and how other parties can campaign in elections. The Greens are opposed to the idea of spending money on motorways or acquiring homes to build motorways. It doesn't matter if it's on one side of a rail line or another, or in one marginal seat or in one safe seat. We will make promises and commitments based on principle and then we will advocate those policies within Parliament. And when it comes to West Connects, I am proud to say that our candidates in, across the entire 33 kilometres of that route, whether in Blacktown, Parramatta, anywhere in southwestern Sydney or western Sydney are all saying the same thing at these forums, which is we shouldn't be spending billions of dollars on motorways, we should be spending it on public transport. Just a little point here, I used to live on Edgewood Road, so I know about the road reservation there. Um, I can't understand why the reservation would be kept on the other side. Um, there must be some reasoning in the um, planning department why they've kept that, uh, why is I don't know. Um, and for any um, acquisition of houses, it disrupts communities. The same with um, new roads going in Greenfield there, it disrupts uh, wildlife habitat, the same thing. Um, and this is a, a very good reason for it. Yeah, new, new roads are not the answer. Alternative transport in places the biggest city is the only way uh, my specific concern with St Peter's is you're spending a large amount of money to get a very short amount of freeway in addition to what we already have and tollway, motorway, yeah. Um, and then as a result of spending a huge amount of money, there's a very good chance that the Trafficking King Street's going to be worse, so 
if you're going to spend a lot of money, you want to actually make sure that things are better, not worse. So big money inflicting big damage just seems a really bad idea. Hi, my name's David. Uh, I'd like to start off by just saying thank you for coming out. There's a big show that's uh, put it lightly a trust deficit in politics in New South Wales at the moment, and one way to restore that is by coming and speaking to the community, so thank you. My question relates to the stories that have been in the media recently regarding the, the alignment between the 10 year bond rate and the long term growth rate in our economy, and I know that's a federal issue, but uh, if they we're able to issue uh, those bonds and raise money, um, and we invest that money in things that are, have a return of greater than one, which I think you agree we should be the only things we're investing in. That's essentially free money. And the, uh, it's been suggested in those media reports that state governments should also have recourse to that funding. I'm just wanted to get each of your parties' positions on that opportunity, and uh, if you would take advantage of it, what would you invest in? Now we've been going that way across, so we might go this way and we come back. Uh, I think most of us who run a household realise that if you take on debt to get an asset, now for many that's the family home, that as long as that asset holds its value and hopefully appreciates, that debt isn't a catastrophic problem. But obviously if you spend debt on holidays and recurring expenses and don't have an asset, then that's the debt that's a worry. So I do know that uh, borrowing is very cheap, and so if there were critical infrastructure projects that were going to deliver value to the community, then the low interest rate would be a time to borrow to acquire assets of clearly demonstrated value but not for recurrent expenditure. Thanks for the question. Um, there's no doubt that there are real issues, particularly for state governments, in relation to the amount of money we have and what we'd actually like to spend it on. Um, latest commitment around the economic settings to the state are uh, uh, fairly clear in relation to this election, which is we want to keep the AAA credit rating, that we'll actually keep um, debt um, basically keep ourselves in circles over, over the economic cycle, that we don't support the privatisation of ele electricity assets. What we are saying though in relation to um, looking at funding for the future is making sure that cost benefit's done, making sure that we would only fund things that actually meet the cost benefit, which is the first tick. One of the great concerns we have about many of the projects that this current government's putting up is there is no transparency, there is no release of the information. We just don't trust that there is actually, um, these are the best projects for the money that's going into them, and I could point to several that we say about that. So we're committed to doing that. We're also looking at other ways to fund um, infrastructure of the future, including things like value capture. But there are some hard decisions for us to make. Um, and I think that we start off by noting the point that you make, which is that if the cost benefit analysis doesn't um, stack up, then we shouldn't be proceeding. Can I just say quickly, and I apologise, I should have said this at the beginning, I actually have to go to another function um, now, um, and so I have to leave um, now. So I'm just sorry, I meant to say that the opening in my opening remarks, which I didn't get to do, but so I apologise for that. Um, but I'm very happy to answer any questions and people can contact me, um, I'm very easy to find. Yeah. 